I'll level with you. When you look at the recent form, there's three spots of green in League One and a lot of red and a little bit of yellow. It's uh, it's not been a great start to our time in League One. Right now, we are above the relegation zone by two points, but the teams in the drop zone have games in hand on us. Today, we're taking on Wrexham in 18th and Rotherham in 13th. Two teams in and around us. I really need to win these games. Let's get into it. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Today is episode number 56 here with Guernsey, and this is the second episode of season number nine. Yesterday, over on Guernsey Radio, BBC Radio Guernsey to be precise, I did an interview with Tim, who's the morning host. If you want to check out that interview, they uploaded it as a short little segment. Uh, I'll link it down in the description. If you want to hear me talk about the save game, naturally, if you watch the series, you'll probably know a lot of the stuff I'm talking about anyway. On the flip side, if you heard me on the radio, now you're here, well, you should go watch the entirety of the rest of the series. If you have managed to do that in the last 24 hours, I, I don't think you could have done that. I don't think there's enough hours in the day to catch up on Park to Prem, but we're, we're back here. League One's very, very difficult. Now, first things first, I have played quite a lot of football manager since we were last here. Of course, we ended things with a defeat against Pompey. And following on from that, we lost against Stockport at home. Not a good result, this one. The one silver lining, Kamara getting on the score sheet. I mean, the goals have not exactly been flowing so far. This man is our joint top goal scorer with four. I suppose on the flip side, good to see him get on the score sheet. After the defeat against Stockport, though, we did bounce back for a win. First win of the season. We won 1-0 against Barnsley. 61% of the ball, and yet they had double the number of shots than this. Uh, one silver lining here. Good defensive display, and Hassana at right back getting an assist from right wing back. Still not actually getting a good rating, but I think Hassana has set the record in the league for the most distance covered. I tell a lie, he's dropped off the charts. He stopped trying recently. At the start of the season, he was up here. On the flip side, Jay Haddo is here and he's learned to play left back. So uh, that is the one success story of this season so far. That was a lot of alliteration. So not exactly a great first month to the season. On the flip side, September... Better, if not great. Six games played in all competitions, five in the league. First things first, we lost against Swindon in the Papa John's Trophy. Following on from that, though, back-to-back -back draws. Scoring draws as well against Lincoln City and MK Dons at home. Unfortunately, we could not beat Bolton. Yeah, they demolished us. I say they demolished us. It was 1-0. They scored in the last 10 minutes. It was the kind of game, though, where we were holding on for large spells and we just couldn't hold on to the end. After that, though, we did muster up a draw against Tranmere Rovers, so I suppose only one defeat in our last four was fine in the league, and we actually followed that up with a win against Bradford City 4-2, perhaps the first game this season where we've actually looked like we belong in this league. We were playing amazingly. We were three goals up inside 17 minutes. Charles breaking his goal-scoring duck. He had not scored in a long time going into this one. And then Mr. Beckford, who is now 19. We didn't give him a birthday party because he got sent off in this one. Uh, yeah, kind of threw us under a bus a little bit. And from there, we hung on a little bit. We did actually score having gone down a man. Despite a late goal, it finished 4-2. We got the win. And actually, silver lining here, with the exception of Beckford, everyone else put in a good shift. It was a good team display. Unfortunately, the momentum of that win was halted as we lost to Leighton Orient, albeit in the Papa John's Trophy, where I'm pleased to report this year we've not made it out the group stage. After that, a defeat against Derby County, somewhat expected, and the next game, another away game, this time against Charlton. This was a big game. Charlton struggling a little bit this year. As you can see, Brandon Charles got us off to the best possible start in the sixth minute, and it was two late goals that secured us a win. It was a very, very even game. As they went on the attack at the end, we caught them out and to be honest it was a game where I have to doff my hat to Darren Rigby this man I'll tell you what he came in for some abuse in the comments yesterday he's heard it and in his last five games he's actually playing kind of okay uh, his average rank still isn't good I will say now that was dragged down by the first game of the season where he did get a 5.9 so looking at the league table as things stand, we are currently in 16th, but like I said earlier, we've already played a game more than a few teams in and around us. Realistically, to avoid relegation, we probably need to be targeting just over a point per game. Right now, we have 12 points after 11 matches, so 
mission accomplished, sort of. Um, one thing I would acknowledge is the fact we have already played Portsmouth, Derby, Burton, Lincoln City, Bolton, and they're all towards the top of the table. We've not had the easiest run of games to start the year. So with that in mind, the two games today against teams in the bottom half are the kind of games I'm hoping we can win. Now, one thing that has been a struggle this year, actually, has been the sheer volume of injuries to key first team players as well. Connor Panny has had three injuries in the last month, which is absolutely ridiculous. He's still kind of carrying the knock a little bit. As a result, he has not played too much in the team. When he has played, he's got two assists in four. He's a very important player for us. I miss him greatly. I make that sound like he's died or something. He is still here, I can confirm. Elsewhere, Scott Williams, of course, star centre-back, debatably the best player in our team. He's been out for three weeks as well, and the injuries have kind of just continued to add up. If we sort by date here, you can see there's just been kind of a constant stream of them. Ben ace has been out for a period. Owen Beckett, left-back's been out. Brandon Charles missed a few games as well with a twisted knee. And in a period of the season where games are coming thick and fast, it has limited my ability to have a settled 11. Now, just just looking over on the team front, you might have noticed the bank balance is depleting rather quickly. Uh, I don't actually know what's causing this. I guess it's just the expenditure of wages. I mean, the wage budget has jumped up this year. We will get a lump sum of money at the end of the year. It is something to have our eye on. And I did see in the comments people saying, Jack, you know, you can't spend your money on wages. Maybe you should go out and make some board requests. Believe me when I say I've asked the board for an awful lot recently. They've not given me any of it. Improved junior coaching budget, rejected. Coaches allowed and physios allowed. They were both granted. Uh, minor issue, I didn't really realise that the financial fair play rules that we fall under also include staff wages. Right now, we've got £570 excess. It's not enough to bring in a meaningful member of staff, never mind any players. And of course, last time we left things, the transfer window was still open. I did look at potential loan signings to end the kind of transfer window. Naturally, I couldn't afford to pay any players' wages, so it was going to have to be freebie loans. But due to our facilities and just, well, the club status as a whole, the loan options out there just weren't good enough to improve the first team, sadly. So as a result, we're kind of just stuck with the squad that we've got. And if it wasn't for financial fair play, there's definitely areas of the team I would be looking at. Goal scoring wise, we have been weak to start the year. Charles and Kamara have chipped in with eight goals between them, but neither of them has been that striker to kind of really set the world alight. Did look at a couple of options, but sadly, I can't sign anyone because I only have £570 to spend. It's a little bit interesting actually. You can see here the wage budget that the game says we have and the board have given me is £3.7,000 a week. But if I basically go and try and sign any player, let's look at transfer listed players, or rather not transfer listed players, players interested in a transfer though. And if I just go to any player here and approach to sign, because the fact we only have the £500 to spend, the players just all think that we don't have the financial muscle. In summary, we, we lack finances or something. Also, Harvey Jones got released by uh, Connors Quay over in Wales. We've had our eye on him for years. Even he thinks we lack the financial muscle. And for people wondering, is it because they're on doubtful? I'll just put it on interested and go to the next player down. Yeah, we have no money. We do find ourselves in a surprisingly challenging situation. I can't improve the squad. I'm kind of stuck with the players that I've got. If I want to improve the team, I need to sort out the FFP stuff. The one minor silver lining of sorts, I suppose, is attendances this year have been better. Despite the fact we've moved to Torquay, uh, we have had some better-ish attendances. I say that. I'm looking at the 470 fans who attended L the Leighton Orient game. But what I will say in defence of that was it is the, the Papa John's trophy. Not even the fans care about this competition. Now, bad news for away day fans. Both games today are at home. But I feel like these are two rather interesting games to do. Of course, Wrexham, a team that are very much in the public eye, both... I guess, suppose nationally within the United Kingdom, but also internationally. They were actually relegated from the championship in this save game last year. They're currently down in 18th. Their media prediction was 11th. They will back themselves to beat us. On the flip side, today's second opposition, our Rotherham, you might remember, got promoted via the playoffs last year. So one team that came down, one team that came up with us. But when you look at the league table, teams that we should hopefully be pushing rather hard. So in terms of team news today, we are actually without a couple of players. A pyre is suspended, so at defence, Beckford 
is going to come in. I'm hoping he's going to be well behaved today and not get sent off again. Elsewhere, Owen Beckett left back is coming back from injury. So Hadro is going to play out there. Hadro, of course, the right footed player who we were training to play left wing back for just this occasion. So good to have him in the team. In terms of the player roles, you might have noticed I've changed things up a little bit. We were running two advanced forwards with an advanced playmaker in behind. I have changed that now. So Charles is playing as a deep lying forward on attack. This is a role that actually he is rather well suited to, certainly when it comes to his creation ability you know 11 passing 11 vision for a striker at this level isn't too bad and with that change I have made the decision to play Kelly as a shadow striker this was the position and role he played for us in the 4-1-2-1-2 the diamond we used for the tail end of last year he looked pretty good in that position and since we have made that change he's playing a couple of better performances elsewhere in the team you might notice in the center of the midfield we are now deploying a deep line playmaker on defend don't really have a player who's a perfect fit for this role but of all the players that we have Oshin Gallagher here is the man. I've been told his name is said Oshin by the comment section. I'm trusting you guys at home. I could potentially rush AC back into the team to play deep line playmaker. That probably would be the ideal choice when we've got everyone available. But given the issues he's had with injuries, kind of just trying to reintroduce him slowly. On the bench, we have got a few different options. Robbie Yer has looked interesting on off the bench as kind of a bit of an impact man, of course, playing as a target forward. What I will say is I don't really think he's good enough for this division. Uh, I mean that in the most polite possible way, Robbie. Please don't take it personally. But yeah, he just lacks a little bit of a something something. And if I'm not mistaken, he has not scored in like... 14 hours or something mental. You know when you get to the end of a football manager game, you get the inbox item being like, by the way, they've still not scored. I keep getting that after every game that this guy comes on off the bench in. Elsewhere on the bench, though, we've got some pretty good options here. Of course, Panny, AC, Apshorn as well. Players who can definitely make an impact if need be. I'm hoping that today we are going to secure our first Livecom win. Of the two games we've got today, this is probably the harder one, even if Wrexham are lower down in the division right now. Right, let's get into this. I'm feeling oddly optimistic. I don't know if it's because we won our most recent game. Maybe we could get two wins in a row for the first time all season. We're at home. We've been difficult to beat as of late in the league. I think we've had two defeats in our last seven league games, but a few too many draws, not enough wins, is the kind of recipe for disaster that can result in you getting pulled into a relegation dogfight. The good news, at least right now, is the league table hasn't thinned out enough. People haven't got spread apart. I mean, the league table is going to be shown here. There are so many teams on kind of 10 to 14 points. It's kind of mad. The entire bottom half is separated by a matter of, well, fractions. If we win this game and win the next game, suddenly I'll be chirping about how we're going to be in the playoffs. Why is there a kickoff highlight? This always fills me with nerves, unless it's going to be a good highlight that's that's not the start of the game you want to see is it from kelly kelly who potentially has the best passing in our team doing that we're gonna have a bit of defending to do early on here you might notice scott williams has been moved into the center of the defense that is with a pyre's suspension and well let's see what we can do here nice build up play actually earthy bringing it forward hasana tries to put it into the box doesn't beat the first man but we're pressing high we're pressing hard it's been kicked straight at Kamara's head and he's headed it wide. How has he not hit the target there? Throw in on the far side. It's Hasana again. I feel like in the last episode, we saw Hasana doing a load of stuff. He was on the ball a lot, but whenever he actually did bits, it usually was a mistake. He was usually giving away the ball. Maybe he's going to turn things around today. Maybe got a chance here, although Haddo has decided he is scared of a football. Come on, Haddo. Battle away, son. Also, is anyone else uncomfortable about the fact that the left back has the number two? Number three is the number for the left back. Why is Haddo there? I mean, I've trained him to play there. It's my own doing. Maybe I should play him at right back just to make me happy about the numbers. What's happening? We've been given the ball. Kamara. I thought he was going to miss. After the last miss, we were gifted when we were gifted a chance. I was expecting another miss. We've scored one finally. I'll be honest, that is an absolute gift of a goal, isn't it? Do you ever have those goals in Football Manager that you almost feel guilty about celebrating? This is this is one. I mean, what is the defender doing there? What's the finish as well? If the keeper had got down to that, I would have been livid. I mean, 20 minutes played here. Two of our three shots have come from Wrexham giving the ball to us in the final third and, in fact, in their penalty area. That said, I mean, they've got a, a goal kick here, so surely we're doing more with the ball going forward. That's what I choose to believe. Wrexham on the attack. Beckford reads the ball nicely at right centre-back. Obviously, Beckford getting sent off earlier on this season. Not an ideal sign, but at 19... We're going to be patient with him. We're going to give him time to shine and see what he can do. As he plays the ball forward, what is happening? Well, I can see why Wrexham got relegated from the championship, but I can see why they might get relegated again. I mean, apparently it was unstoppable by Kelly, according to the commentator. 
If I'm the Wrexham manager, I'm going to be honest, I'm closing the game and loading up the last save file and just starting again. What? I... The match engine is not perfect, is it? We'll leave it at that. I mean, if we get a third, I might actually start getting carried away. Haddo is going to play it across to Earthy, inside to Scotty Williams. The centre-back up for the set-piece. Gallagher giving it away. A little bit concerned when we commit all our centre-backs for that we're going to be caught short at the back. But a nice transition So we get players back into position. Beckford going to look for Brandon Charles. Can't win the header. And now... There with the ball. Kelly, though, that shadow striker role. We're working back at you there and winning the ball surprisingly deep. Earthy now with it. What can he do? Brandon Charles holding up the play. Deep line forward. Finds his partner in crime. It's offside. Don't celebrate it. I can see the flag up on the far side. You're not catching me out this time, football manager. Compared to last episode, th this looks good. I mean, we might actually be about to get two wins in a row. Or maybe I've just jinxed it horrifically. Last time I was happy that we were leading a game. We bottled it at the end of the League 2 season and didn't win the title. Why did I say anything? Right, Haddo, what can you do? Plays it inside. Kelly's through again. Can he hold it up? He does. Haddo. Left back, cuts inside on his right foot. I might start the Jay Haddo fan club. The number two who plays at left wing back. It upsets me and yet it is somewhat inspirational. It's like, it's like he was pigeonholed into playing right back his whole life. Now we've got him cutting in on his right foot. Oh my word. I mean, the keeping's not great. The defending's not great. But we're 3-0 up. I'm happy now. This makes me think we won't get relegated. Really shouldn't be saying that after 12 games, should I? But that they, that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. Half time here. Wrexham have done absolutely nothing. We've done something. I mean, we've done more than something. We've scored three goals. We're amazing. I'm going to tell the players we're happy. Not even scared of complacency now. I am going to make one change here. Uh, Gallagher is not the greatest of games, and I want to bring in Panny and try and get him a little bit of match fitness. So we'll, we'll bring him on for the second half, as we might have a chance here. Charles inside, defended away by Wrexham, but we've got them on the back foot again early to start the half. Kelly, by the way, absolutely sensational at stri Shadow Striker. Just a waste of time playing him as an advanced playmaker. Not the role he's meant to play, apparently. Right, McGrath whipping it in. Beckford heads it, hits the woodwork. I thought for a second it was going to fall to one of our men. Maybe still a chance, though, here. Hasana is going to dink it. Keeper, it's... What's just happened? Hasana scored from the halfway line. It's his first goal. What's just, what? Okay. You know what I said about the Wrexham manager? If I was Wrexham manager, I, I've smashed up the PC at this point. Hasana has scored from the halfway line. I was ready for a foul to be given on the goalkeeper. I'll level with you. It's not been given. It's four nil. What? That is the weirdest goal I've seen this year. Have you seen weirder? Comment section. Let me know. This game is kind of done. I want to make some changes. Let's bring in Tim Apshorn. Let's bring in AC as well. I'm going to take off Earthy. The rest of the team's playing so well, I'm kind of scared to ruin a winning formula. But with Scott Williams coming back from injury, we're going to bring in Job, I think, in at centre-back. Might as well get some fresh legs in here. I mean, you know it's a good day because even Rigby in goal is on a 7.1 rating. I'm now sat trying to remember, have we kept a clean sheet in a win yet this season? I'm not sure we have. Certainly not kept many clean sheets. Um, but I think, don't jinx it, I think we're going to get one here, folks. Hold on. Three minutes of added time. That can trickle away. I don't care. I feel like we got a little bit lucky in this game. Probably 4-0 flatters us, but we were pretty blooming good. I mean, it's not about how you score your goals. It's just about scoring them. And today, we've scored many. I mean, all of a sudden with that result, we're up to 12. Suddenly, we're solidified as a mid-table team and we're taking on Rotherham, who are another playoff hopeful. Uh, that game, by the way, I think is only a few days away. Yeah, five days away. It's going to be downpour. Bring your umbrella. I'll see you in a mo. Okay, game number two today, Rotherham. I mean, after that last performance, I want to believe we can win again. Heading into this one, a little bit of news. Panny doesn't need a fitness test, can play the whole game. Scott Williams been told 75 minutes. Of course, five days of rest. We're playing on a Sunday because, again, we've got a home game on the same weekend that Torquay have a home game since it's their ground they get priority. So heading into this one, no changes. Was pretty happy with that performance on the whole against Wrexham. Whilst maybe our goals were a tad fortuitous in the way they came about, at the same time, Wrexham created nothing going forward. So hoping for another solid defensive display. Apaya does make the bench. He's sat in timeout. He's been suspended. Been a naughty boy. And uh, well, he 
doesn't deserve to go back into the team. Beckford impressed last time out, so going to stick with this. Wayne, please don't make me regret this decision. We've not come up against as many free at the backs, I feel like, this year than we have the last couple of seasons. I don't know if that's because we're playing a free at the back. Other teams decide not to do the same. But I do feel like, from a defensive point of view, we have actually looked more solid than in any other season I can remember. Of course, from a goal-scoring front, we have been a little bit blunted. But besides that first game of the season against Burton, there's not been too many defensive calamity kind of performances. We've, at the most part, we've looked pretty solid at the back. I really shouldn't be saying this four minutes into the game, should I? I feel like I've been jinxing a lot lately. I should just hush my gums, shut my mouth between highlights. I say that. I mean, they've hit the roof the net again. Free kick from range, not far over. Rotherham knocking on the door early. We're not letting them in, though. Earthy, far side. Maybe a set piece of our own. It's whipped back post. Beckford's there. It's gone across goal. I think it's hit the crossbar and bounced to safety. Rotherham, a little bit lucky still to be in this game after a chance like that. And I mean, there might still be another chance here. It's Haddo on the far side. I'm already thinking about setting up the fan club for him. Kelly got two assists and a goal last game. I'll tell you what, he's got another assist in this one. It is 1-0. We hit the woodwork. They had a warning sign and from a resulting throw in, got the ball back into the box and it's Kamara with another headed goal. He's had a few of those this year. Kelly just cuts inside. Kamara leaps like a salmon, unlike last game, finds the target, in off the post, gives us the lead. Ten minutes left of this first half. Rotherham had a couple of chances early on. They have been the two shots they've had on, on target in this game. Well, not even on target. They've just had them. We've had 68% of the ball as well. We've looked immense, and yet Powell is through here, and we've given away a penalty. McGrath, uh, left centre-back, caught out of position, wrong side of the defender, or the attacker. The defender makes the foul, and now Powell, in front of the away fan faithful, Hits it, and I'll tell you what, for just a moment, I thought Rigby was going to get down to that. The keeper went the right way here, but sadly, got a hand. Not a strong enough hand, though. It's 1-1. Why did I say anything? Half time in this game, I feel pretty hard done by for them to be level. I feel like we were the better team for large spells. To be fair, once they scored their penalty, we didn't really see much of a response from ourselves. But yeah, that one big jump in XG from the penalty spot. Kind of just self-inflicted. I think with that in mind, I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Brandon Charles putting in a concerningly poor performance. And you know what? Apshorn is going to come in early here. I'm sorry to the to the Brandon Charles fan club, because I, I know you guys exist out there, but y your boy's just not doing it in League One. Despite giving away the penalty, by the way, McGrath has the best rating in our defence. I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. Beckford is on a 6.6. .6. You know what, Beckford? Giving you some game time, I'm going to bring in a pyre elsewhere. We're going to take off Gallagher. We're going to bring in Panny. Quick double change. Two subs left in our back pocket. We do also have two stoppages to make those in because of the change we made at half time. Yeah, fresh legs needed here. And well, Apaya, fresh off the bench, taking down the ball nicely. Haddo to McGrath. Panny dropping in a little bit deeper as the deep line playmaker. Definitely helps to kind of link up the play a little bit more out of the defence. I felt like when I was looking at some of the stats, we didn't really transition well out. So with the deep line playmaker sitting deeper, Earthy is able to make some movement like we've seen there. And I'll tell you what, Tim Apshorn might be starting over Brandon Charles next game because that was a sensational finish. Kamara getting the assist, but to be honest, this whole goal was just nice. Deep line playmaker sits deeper. Earthy has a little bit more lateral space to move into. And with that, we've just carved them open and it's been hammered home by Sean. He is massively, well, just... Ham hammered it. I'll do, do, the hammer is the word to use. I don't know where I was going with that. Move on. Right, set piece. Earthy. Could we have another? McGrath heads over. Still 2-1. Do feel like we might need another goal in this game. We just, as good as we've been in this game, we just defensively, we do weird stuff at weird moments. I mean, that's just Football Manager 2023 in a nutshell. But yeah, we do weird stuff at weird moments. A two-goal cushion would help me relax. Ball launched forward. Oh, Apshorn can't get there, but Earthy is going to get to the second ball quickly. And again, carrying the ball dangerously... I think Apshorn there didn't go after the ball knowing he was in an offside position. They're forced to go long. McGraw wins the header. Earthy, through the middle looking for a pass, couldn't quite find the intended target. Ball goes long. Wellington, by the way, Rotherham's key player, has been kept very, very quiet in this game so far. A pyre forward now. Ball in a wide area. Why did I say anything about Wellington? Anytime the ball goes near him, I'm going to be worried. Apshorn's for again. Tim Apshorn, you're starting the next game, mate. Happy Christmas. Sorry, Brandon Charles on the bench. Uh, he's scored two goals from two shots, it feels like. Sensational. I mean, he's got pace. He's got the ability to finish. And apparently, 
maybe maybe he's the player who should be starting in the striking area. Defender misses his header. Apshorn takes one touch, takes a second touch to hit it on the half volley. And it's that same corner again. We scored four goals last game. I tell you what, I didn't expect us to score seven goals in the two games today. Having not scored nearly enough lately, suddenly the, the cameras are on. The lights are on, it's all action, and, well, we've looked really, really good in this game so far, as we did in the Wrexham game, to be fair. Bit disappointing that we haven't got the clean sheet, but you know what? We've not conceded from open play. We can hold on to that as a pyre looks to launch it long, and with it, surrenders possession. Now on the near side here for Rotherham. Because Rotherham were promoted with us last year via the playoffs. This is the kind of game that pre-season I would have backed us to win, but looking at the league table... You might think it's going to be a trickier one. And while looking at the scoreline, you might be thinking it's a tricky game. It's 3-2 here. Chadwick has scored that. The defending here by McGrath. I know he's got a good rating and all. He has left his man there. Chadwick's got in behind. And the goalkeeping is disappointing at best. Corner for us, though. Earthy. Could we get that two-goal cushion back? Ball in. Kelly scores. And, well, I thought for a second the flag was going to go up. I think he was played onside by one defender. Rotherham opted to have no one on the posts there, you might have noticed. And with that, I thought he was going to be offside. But, yeah, it's number 10 there for Rotherham playing Kelly onside. And Kelly, I'll tell you, not just Kelly, the whole team has had a sensational episode today. Oh my word, yeah, you can see there, it was close. I did wonder if number four might be given offside there for interfering, but we've got away with it. Two goal cushion resumed, and yet I don't feel comfortable. Normally I'd feel great in this situation. Right now, very much less so. Rigby with the ball, don't do anything silly, Rigby. What are we doing? I thought he kicked at the back of his own mate there for a second. Hassana dinks it, Kelly's through again. Could he score? Tackle, Kamara, it's 5-2. It, we've had nine goals in two games today. For us, we're, we're back, I think. Perhaps this one was more on the fortuitous side. Kelly through the middle, tackle comes in, keeper's out of position. But you know what? Kamara had to finish it, and he has finished it. Is anyone else getting flashbacks to the Guernsey of old? We can attack, but we can't really defend, but there's lots of goals and it's entertaining. That is pretty much the Guernsey way, it feels like, under my stewardship at this point. If you thought that... Part of our game had been left with the free strikers being abandoned. You fought wrong. It's back. It's alive. I'm witnessing it here as well. There could be another chance because Rotherham are in possession. They're playing it through. Powell, one-on-one, -on -one, in behind, skies it. I don't know if we're expecting another goal here. There is a highlight to end the game. Is there going to be a goal number eight? Hasana could make it happen. Whips it in. Uh, Hasana has never done anything of value. Not just on a football pitch, I feel like just in general. But you know what? Let's look at the positives. Let's look at the good news. We've won 5-2. The old Guernsey is back. And from a situation where I wasn't very happy with where we were, we looked like we were destined for the drop. All of a sudden, we're in eighth place. We're only three points off the playoffs. Probably should emphasize three points off the playoffs, five points away from the relegation zone. It goes both ways. Really, really great performance by Abu Kamara. That is what we brought him in to do. Has had a slow start to time at the club. Two very good performances today. And suddenly, seven goals in 12 games actually looks kind of impressive, especially for a £59,000 signing. Going into today, would I have expected that sequence of events? Absolutely not. But suddenly, we've won three games in a row. The goals are flowing. We look confident. And our goalkeeper has our best pass completion with 90%. The tactical changes we made at the end of last season have definitely changed how we play for the better. In terms of when we're going to be back next episode, I'm not entirely sure yet. This might well be a season where we end up in mid-table, although at this point we could end up challenging for the playoffs or in a relegation fight. I'm not going to get too carried away. It's only October. What I will say is the FA Cup is starting. We've been drawn against Fylde, who are down in the non-leagues. I would love to go on a big FA Cup run. If we could get a load of income via that, I have a sneaking suspicion that would up the wage cap in terms of how much we're allowed to spend. If not this season certainly next year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode today. Fantastic team display. We looked absolutely amazing. Have you seen a goal like that one we saw from the halfway line? Let me know down in the comments. If you've enjoyed things today, do drop a like on it. We are going to be back tomorrow with more Park to Prem action to end the week. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.